Hello and welcome to Market Open Direct Connect, the webinar series for companies to tell their story, why it's compelling and why it's an opportunity to invest. I'm your host, Stuart Walters, and we're joined here today by Daniel Tuffin, Managing Director and CEO of Panther Metals, ASX Code PNT. Daniel will provide an update on the company's planned 7,000 metre drilling campaign at the Laverton Gold Project and the ongoing development of the Coglia Nickel Cobalt Project. Following this presentation, attendees will have the opportunity to ask questions directly to Mr. Tuffin during a moderated Q&A, of which you can submit any questions via the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. I'd like to introduce our guest, Daniel. Welcome to Direct Connect and over to you. Thanks for having me and welcome to everyone that's joined in. Um, so I guess first and foremost, uh, we'll start with um, the Laverton Gold Project and our focus on pivoting to gold. Um, some of the high notes to, to go over initially is that we are pivoting our focus back to where we had some of the Bonanza um, and high grade gold targets uh, as part of the Laverton Gold Project. Um, it does form a strategic and dominant position in the WA gold fields. Uh, and we're looking at doing 7,000 meters of drilling over 10 uh, highly prospective targets um, in the near future. I'll just skip through the disclaimer for everyone. Uh, so a bit of a recap on Panther. We listed uh, December, 2021 oversubscribed. Uh, our initial focus was directed towards the Coglia Nickel Cobalt project. We did have quite a large amount of gold in the portfolio. Her battery metals and nickel at the stage was doing very well. And uh, we knew that we had something at Coglia. Uh, we were able to define a mineral resource of 102.8 million tonnes at 0.6% nickel. And we delivered a scoping study in May of this year. Uh, the results of the scoping study are, are there on your screen. Um, they came back exceedingly well. Um, and I should note that you know, it, it is just based on 30% of the resource of the total ore body, the scoping study. So what we have to do now is go back and have a look at the metallurgy and, and do a bit of work on Coglia, um, even though it is a, a globally comparable um, uh, resource with an all-in sustaining cost of $4.67 a pound. It is um, something that we've got to work on. So timing is good to head back to our gold prospects. And uh, as we see there with a portfolio of 28 highly prospective and underexplored gold projects um, at the Laverton Gold um, Project, the, uh, the company now intends to exploit those high gold prices. And more importantly, um, recent M&A in the area, which I'll go over a bit later, while we continue to advance Coglia. Whoops, apologies. So here we are in the world. Uh, we're surrounded by um, world-class producing assets. There's several large um, gold producing mills in the area, including um, Granny Smith Sunrise Dam. You've got Mount Morgans out that way as well. Uh, Bright Star is close to us. Uh, in fact, 11 kilometers to the southwest of Burtville. Um, and that's coming back online as well. So we're in a good neighborhood. Uh, the Laverton Gold Project, you can see, is, is quite a, a dominant uh, area of uh, land holding that we have. There's about 35 kilometers of strike there that we've got to go out and explore. So a bit of a focus on the Laverton Gold Project. <clears throat> As I mentioned, it's quite large, 317 square kilometres of continuous lease package within a 100 kilometre radius of multiple gold mills. The, the trick to that whole Laverton Gold Project was getting continuity. Um, initially, that, that, that whole area has been um, seen a paucity of exploration. It's been land farmed and just held. So putting it all together uh, for Panther was one of the priorities. And that in and of itself now is is is, is quite a good thing for, for us to go and explore without having any sort of other um, um, companies or or, or or objects in the way. Um, historic drilling includes, as you can see, Birdville East. We went out there and drilled that um, early 2022, and we got 15 metres at 53.94 grams per tonne. Very shallow from 27 metres. Uh, historically, at Einstein Gold, um, there's been nine meters at 46 from 131 meters. So we've got a few prospective areas on the right there. You can actually see some of the diamond drill core that we we drilled, um, uh, 2023, I believe, and you can see some of the um, the highly disseminated sulfides in there. Um, just because you get sulfides, that doesn't mean you've got mineralization. However, um, we did find a lot of um, useful information, geologically speaking, about the area. Um, so we're looking at a 79-hole, 7,000-metre drill program. Um, 
to fund this program, we are currently raising 1.96 million by way of our announceable rights issue. Um, we have include, um, engaged Cumulus Wealth, um, and it's a fully underwritten rights issue. Uh, if there's any questions about uh, what we think about it as a board, um, the fact that we're committing $300,000 to priority underwriting should um, should give you the idea about how how prospective we think this area is. Um, there's a corporate snapshot. Uh, board and management own 12.1% of the company. Um, myself, Renko, and uh, Kerem there all have experience in uh, mining or in and around mining. So just a quick um, update of what we've done since listing. Um, we discovered the shallow bonanza grade at Burfield uh, East. Um, we had some good hits from a little bit of diamond drilling out there. Uh, we've got broken stockpiles outside, out, out on site. Um, some of the peak grades that we got were 38 uh, grams a tonne. There's been up to four or five ounces to the tonne out there uh, off those stockpiles. Um, we've got a, an 800 metre long um, target zone at Burtville East. And um, we are located, just as I said before, 11 kilometres to the south, where uh, north east of um, the upcoming Bright Star plant. We also um, had a bit of a proof of concept within the 40 mile camp project area. Um, that's uh, 25 kilometres squared and then 40 mile camp east, another 25 kilometres squared area. We've got a big area in which we went to test for those, um, you know, getting some gold smoke. We've got some smoke. Uh, we got a metre uh, 1.29 from seven, quite shallow, uh, and it was just some shallow drilling. Uh, we've gone over the nickel. Um, we'll focus on the gold moving forward. So here's the pipeline for exploration. Uh, advanced exploration obviously is at Birdfield East where um, we discovered three new gold loads with our, um, a very small drilling program. I think it was 660 meters of RC from memory. Um, and we got some great grades uh, out that way and I'll go through some of those Bonanza peak grades. Um, we've also got Ironstone Gold that's sort of drill tested to advanced. We'll be uh, looking at that as well. Uh, we've got the new discovery of Picnic Ridge as mentioned and Rayner and Stromboli South. And then we've got some early exploration targets and some geo new geochem anomalies as well. Here's the, uh, the snapshot. We've got 35 gold targets spanning 35 kilometers of strike. Um, as I've mentioned, it's a dominant land holding. It truly is. Uh, we have five undersupply processing plants, Beta, Barnacote, Granny Smith, Sunrise Dam and Mount Morgans. It's important to note those last three, um, they're quite large with Mount Morgan's being turned on by um, Genesis um, imminently. All targets are on uh, granted tenure, which is, is also important and we can commence immediately without um, encumbrance with our exploration drilling. Uh, we'll go over the four historic targets that require further testing uh, in a minute. And uh, we've got the Commonwealth area with nuggets as well. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the area has seen no modern exploration carried out, um, and there's a, a, in between the two gold anomalisms that are known either side of the strike. So here we are as a bit of a priority breakdown in detail. Seven thousand meters, as I mentioned, over ten uh, prospective areas. The top four are probably the the most exciting targets at Burtville East. We've gone over that already. Um, what got us interested in that was a historic intercept. Uh, five metres at 23 grams with a peak of 110 grams over a metre. And that's why we went in there and did that drilling in um, 2022, as it turns out. Ironstone, uh, we plan to do 1,800 metres over at Ironstone. Uh, again, some of the best hits uh, out there uh, are nine metres at 46 and 4.5 at 5.5. Rain is a new one. Um, that came out of a deep sort of dive into the whole area. We had our geologists um, go through with our with our um, geophysics guys and and um, do a bit of a deep dive on all the historic um, soils, augers, vacuum drilling, air core. Um, there's not a lot of RC, and there's one or two diamonds in the area, if that. Um, so you can imagine over 317 odd square kilometres. That took some time, uh, but Rainer was one that popped out, uh, and it's got some some interesting um, numbers. Uh, and, and again, fairly shallow, 12 metres at 1.32 and 4 at 3.35. And for those uh, who are geologists, uh, exploration guys listening along, uh, pretty sure they were 4 metre comps. That means that 
and four meters every section of drilling was tested the whole four meters was tested so i'm not sure if there were peaks in there and at comet well we've um that's one of the more exciting ones right in the guts uh, in 2016 40 ounces of nuggets were discovered just from one campaign uh, that was done through whitecliffe um, resources out at the time but there's been no modern exploration i.e no drilling in the area so we plan to go in there so those those are our top four targets uh, and they're, it's really quite exciting, um, and we're hoping to get out there fairly soon. A uh, bit of a focus now on Burtville East. Um, some of the breakdown of those um, 15 metres at 54 grams per tonne, uh, they're bonanza grades, a metre at 79.9, 478 grams a tonne, 125.5, and 43.8. I mean, absolutely stunning um, intercepts. Uh, we've had, again, um, more Bonanza intercepts, including uh, BVE002. We had a metre at 73.3 from 93. Um, and we had a, a nice hit 10 metres at 7, including a metre at 62 um, from BVE009. Uh, we did, um, I did pan some of the gold from the cuttings, uh, and um, we actually observed quite a lot of visible gold in the pan. The other thing is we discovered three new loads. So in the pink in the picture on the right, they're the three new loads that were discovered from the drilling. Um, the red load is the historic BVE main load. It sort of uh, stops around the 40 or 50 metre mark at water level. It was actually sort of two men and a dog out there. Um, uh, old school in the 80s, sort of, um, it must have been outcropping. And that's why they've missed the other loads. Uh, all the stockpiles are, are, are sort of, you know, fresh rock highly disseminated stuff that they couldn't actually use a stamp mill or a dolly pot or, or whatever they were using to extract the gold. So they've all been left behind. So we've got a nice little area there to go in and focus on, and that's our first drill target. Uh, it could well be that we're just looking at striations there. It could be multiple loads running from the, the southwest to the northeast, and that those two um, new loads to the northeast actually join up. We're, we're going to investigate that and check that out and see what's going on. And uh, most importantly for Burtville East, modelling suggests that it doesn't pinch out at depth. So that's that's really good. Oops, sorry. Um, well, it's going to be a quick one today. Um, so further gold targets in the in the actual LGP itself, uh, in, in addition to those first four, sort of picked out a couple of my favourites and 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 the the priorities that we're looking at. Again, it's the air core drilling um, from twenty twenty three, which which you know gave us that proof concept. In the in the uh, forty mile camp area, where we hit that smoke at Picnic Ridge, so we're going to go in there and and do some uh, drilling. We've got about five hundred and fifty meters of strike, and uh, Birdfield Southeast. Um, this one's an interesting one. You can sort of see on the map where Birdfield East is and where it was drilled. And if you follow the uh, the, the the actual forty mile camp or the Birdfield forty mile camp trend. You can actually see where it sort of cuts through that um, Burtville southeast area directly to the east southeast of Burtville. Um, the target area has got a, a pretty decent two by one kilometer wide soil anomaly um, that's never been drilled. So we think it's it suggests a, a slightly faulted offset of the um, Burtville uh, east mineralization. Um, if we sort of go down through that trend, you can see Comet Well and Ironstone right in the guts. Comet Well is where we're, we're focusing on some drilling in an area that hasn't been um, checked really or, or done a lot of, it's been lightly drilled. Um, and then Ironstone to the northeast. Comet Well South is um, a, a new area for us to go into on that map. That's actually really quite exciting. We were able to consolidate that central ground, um, which hadn't been consolidated before. You could sort of see, I might have to see if I can zoom in for everyone. There we go. Hey, look at that. You can sort of see uh, with Commonwealth South, uh, this is our uh, original, or this is a part of our lease that we picked up um, this year. We did some soils, and that the, all the dots are, are the resulting sort of anomalies from our soils. You can see how little has been done up through here, and this is where the nuggets were found. And you can quite clearly see trends moving through here as we sort of go up. And you can see wherever there has been something hit, there's been some nice numbers and then areas uh, like throughout here in the central volcanic area, um, Stromboli, where, where there's a there's a big gap in that data. So um, it's quite interesting. So we've also defined a few new areas. 
um, Golden Lion down to the south, uh, Jaguar Gold, um, which is just in here, and Golden Puma, which is sort of heading towards the end of the trend, at which point it uh, it sort of stops and turns into uh, a nickel-controlled um, target and heads into Coglia. So that is very quickly, in a nutshell, where we've ended up. Uh, um, yeah, happy to take any questions if there are any. Um, hand it over to you, Stuart. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, fantastic presentation, mate. Very informative and appear well-placed um, with gold price at all-time highs. Uh, we have had a few questions come in, so we'll get straight into that. Um, first one, what do you think about um, discovering further loads at Burtville East? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident that we'll either discover further loads or expand on those current discoveries that we have. Uh, the main, the BVA main um, high grade load is open at depth. Again, that's just the, due to, to the water table and um, it would have been a couple of privateers in there. It looks like initially there's a, there's a small head frame um, and, and a bit of detritus around that suggests it was privateers and they do have two shafts, one for ventilation and one for actually, you know, getting up and down in at, at they would have just stoked down on that outcropping area. So that's open at depth. Um, I, I, I think we'll probably find, if, if, if it is striations, we'll find further um, loads to the northeast and or southwest. We're going to investigate some of these closer initially along strike, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty pretty confident that we'll hit some, hit some great numbers out there with our first round of drilling. I mean, the... <laughs> That the, there's bonanza grades out there and we've already proven that. So we've just got to go and, and further prove that up. Um, and if we can expand, we can follow up with some good drilling and then come back in and, and create a resource out of Birdville East. Um, it might be a smaller size resource, but it'll be very high grade. Excluding um, Birdville East, which of the 10 priority targets excite you the most and why? Yeah, I, I think... <laughs> I think Comet Well. I've got two actually. I think Comet Well, just because it's it's it just hasn't been touched. It's been the sort of um, the 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 ownership of of prospectors and a, and, a, and a bit of a prospectors patch in, in the past. And getting some of these leases were were quite difficult. It took me some time, uh, particularly this central lease here. Um, so any sort of drilling in that area will be relatively new. Uh, you can see most of these are just soils uh, all along here. Um, and then there's, there's areas like to the southeast of um, of the Ironstone area that just has zero exploration in it. And again, that's that's simply because of that land holding and land farming. And the fact that you know, there were in the in the in the in the immediate area, there are um, you know deposits like Wallaby much closer to to these mills. So, some of these guys will now be looking out further, and by further, it's another five or ten k's to what their normal radius would be. Um, and if you look at what's happening in that area, to our very south, I'll just go to the big map. Sorry, bear with me. Down here at Lord Byron, um, so this is the LGP area. Down at Lord Byron, they're actually trucking that up or planning to truck that up to the Bright Star Mill. Uh, so you can see where we are in the world. We're not that far away. Uh, it's fully accessible by road to all of these projects. And if you're talking great as King, Bert Felice can get out there. I think um, certainly um, what we've got at Commonwealth can. And the, the second one that sort of really excites me and interests me um, is Rainer. We, we, that, one, that one sort of fell out. We actually had a few areas like Stromboli, uh, Pina, um, Rainer that sort of fell out. Um, and Etna BMA were through this general midsection area here. They did some very light um, drilling and exploration in the 1990s, 1995 actually, Battle Mountain, Australia. And they um, they found some stuff. Unfortunately, the gold price wasn't in their favour at that time, and so they sort of left that alone. Anglo came through and did a diamond hole, a nice diamond hole up around um, uh, where was it? Um, yeah, Rainer area as well. And that came out with some interesting numbers. So rain is, rain is the one that's sort of fallen out that, that I like. It's quite shallow. Um, and there's some nice numbers falling out of that. And then, um, okay, I've got to say a third one. <laughs> uh, Birdfield Southeast, uh, there's been 
bugger all drilling in there. So we could actually prove up the fact that we think it's faulting uh, along that main trend. You've noted um, earlier that several mills in the area uh, are underfed. What are the plans with the Laverton Gold project in feeding those mills? Yeah, so realistically, we're probably about three years away from being able to, to feed those mills. What, what we want to be doing with the Laverton Gold project is discovery through to resource, um, through to potential ore reserve, um, and, and act as a, as, a, as a large base load for any one of those mills in the area. Birdville East is the most advanced, um, so that will probably come to a resource stage sooner rather than most, and uh, along with Ironstone Gold. But this is a very rich, very strategic package that if I was in the area and one of these uh, owners, uh, you know, Goldfields, Anglo, um, even maybe GME, uh, I'd be I'd be looking at this area with some interest to see what comes about from our drilling. Um, the gold price floating around 3,700 still, knock on wood. Um, you know, this is a great opportunity for the company to inject some value into the Laverton Gold Project while the gold price is up, whilst we're doing the, um, you know, some minor um, cost work in the metallurgy for, for Coglia in the background. Um, and you mentioned, obviously, the gold price is up and, and kind of all-time highs, so it makes sense for the pivot. Um, what do you think needs to happen for this to filter through to the juniors? Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, um, I think Panthers market cap is is two million or around that as we speak. Um, and we've got a, a, firstly, we've got a, a battery metals project, thirty percent of the resource worth over seven hundred million dollars uh, Australian. Um, I, I don't know when it's going to start floating through to gold. I was at the gold conference in Sydney last week. Uh, I think investors are starting to turn back to it. They're starting to understand that. That um, you know, gold is an all price high, all time price high, and it doesn't look like it's going to subside anytime soon. But I, I've been quoted at the start of the year, I think at one of your stocks, Wahares, actually, Stuart, um, saying that I thought you know I was a big bull and that would be um, thirty five hundred by the end of the year, and uh, we're not even at the end of the year, and it's thirty seven hundred. So yeah, I think I think you know if you're looking for something um, to invest in that. I mean, I just, I've always just thought gold is is where it's at, the precious metals. Um, you know, you can hold it in your hand, you can pour a gold bar, you can't hold a crypto coin, um, and flavor of the months might get you a sugar hit on on the um, on the share price. But at the end of the day, I think Bill Beeman actually came out just yesterday and said, you know, the way that you see a 10-bagger is you invest in companies that take things through to production. Um, and I agree with that. They're sort of different levels, um, resource and reserve and production. And, um, but in addition to that, you want to find companies that, that have commodities that are in, um, in requirement and need. Uh, and that's why something like gold, which has been around for, been around trader for over 2000 years, um, is, is something that, you know, I would look at and continue to look at in the future. How was the conference last week and what were some of the key takeaways? Yeah, really good. I think, Again, investors were quite buoyant. Uh, a lot of the companies that were there certainly looking to promote and, and are able to raise on the back of um, some of these, uh, some of their projects. Mika, for example, MEK, they did really well with their recent Oramet uh, raise and they're moving into production. Um, I liked a few others there as well. Um, there's a few um, cashed up um, companies, um, uh, Petronas, and uh, King Rose looking around for assets. Um, on the sort of flip side, the takeaway that I, I had was with regards to all in sustaining costs, they're still quite high. So I think um, GME came out with 2,300 as an all in sustaining cost. Generally, the average for the last year or two has been 19, 19 odd 100 um, for an all in sustaining cost. So those costs are still high and and they're due to labor and fuel and a lot of other external issues and pressures that the mining industry aren't responsible for but once they sort of start to come back um, and pair back a bit you'll see a lot more profit although having said that pouring gold at 3700 and and um having an all in sustaining cost of 2300 ain't so bad and lastly um what makes it a successful next 12 months for you and the panther team yeah um certainly i expect one of the four or two of the four priority projects that we're looking at 
to to pay out, if you will. Um, Birdville East, Rayner, Ironstone, um, and Ironstone South. Uh, they're the ones I'm really looking at. Um, that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is being able to come back in and follow up on those projects and convert them into a resource. I'd like to see possibly Birdville, certainly um, Ironstone. Oh, sorry, I'll say that again. Possibly Birdville or Ironstone converted into a resource within the next 12 months would be our ideal outcome. Uh, paired with further discoveries from these geochemical anomalies and further further proving up of the Picnic Ridge area. So we've got a lot of news just on the gold. There's 7,000 metres of drilling. Uh, we're looking to try and really invest into this large area um, and and um, get some return on investment. So uh, we've done a we've done a lot of homework and um, we're pretty confident in um, our drilling to come. Daniel, thank you. Um, clearly, an exciting time um, for you and the team at Panther. Um, that concludes today's webinar. For more information about Panther Metals, you can head to the company website panthermetals.com.au or follow the company's social media um, platforms which are kept up to date and look great. Thank you to everyone for attending today's webinar presentation um, and for some great questions submitted. If there is a company you'd like to hear from, please send me an email, stuart at marketopen.com.au and I'll reach out to that company on your behalf. Daniel, thanks for your time today. Keep up the great work and look forward to chatting again soon. Thanks, Stuart. Cheers, mate.